This is Coogan Cassius for Eiffel TV. We're in the Merritt Hotel here, um, just after the weigh-in for Burns and Crawford with me. I have uh, promoter Dave Caldwell. Hi, right, Dave. I'm good, mate. How are you? What's happening? Up in Scotland. Sunny old Scotland. Glasgow. Have you uh, recovered from uh, last weekend? No, no, no. Um, it's been a it's been a, a hectic week, really. Had a lot of stuff to do. Um, got Curtis out maximising his his um, his um, <coughs> previous achievements on Saturday night. So we've been getting him out as m many times as we can in the public eye, and he's been on everything. He's been BBC, um, ITV, S Sky Sports News. He's been on twice this week. Um, it's been on Ringside. It's been on Talksport. It's been on everything. We ain't done yet. Not done yet. All right, we'll come on to Curtis in a minute. Um, we're in Glasgow uh, for Ricky Burns's defence of his WBO lightweight title against uh, the unbeaten American Terence Crawford, um, who's been over here this week all week, and no one's really managed to engage a lot from anything Terence has said, uh, including myself. So um, doesn't really tell what's going to happen in the ring though, because he's a he's a good fighter, isn't he, Dave? He's a very good fighter. I've watched quite a lot of him um, over the last couple of weeks, especially. Um, he strikes me as being um, uber confident, slick, very smooth, um, and, and very, very talented. And their camp, the whole camp, everything about him, just watching him in the hotel here, um, everything about him oozes confidence. You know, they've come here expecting to win, um, which you would expect a big American prospect to do. Um, <clears throat> But uh, it doesn't. It doesn't seem false, you know. Like sometimes you can get, you can get fighters come into another country and try and put on a bit of bravado, and um, try and you know they are confident, but they've got they've, they have got doubts underlying. They don't seem to have got any doubts at all, to be honest. Um, you know, and, and that that goes from you know the build up he's had. He's had the big build up, and he's seen as one of one of America's next big stars. So you expect that. But um, you know, he's. he's He's not really boxed at the highest level, um, which nobody has until the, until they get proven, and this is his, his big opportunity. But um, what I see is that I think he likes everything done at his own pace, and I think he's one of these guys that you know, hopefully for Ricky's sake, he just wants to box at his pace and pick his shots and look good, and maybe if it gets down dirty, and Ricky can put some pressure and some pace into things. Hopefully in the championship rounds it can you know it can tell on Ricky's favour. Mm. Um, on paper it suggests Ricky's toughest fight, but without doubt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, lot of, a lot of people wouldn't necessarily know a lot about Terence Crawford uh, in England, apart from your hardcore boxing mm. fans. But like I said, he's been on the scene a little mm. while and yeah. been m moved up. Like I said, I think he had a, a decent win over Prescott and uh, mm. his last fight as well. So. Mm. Uh, Saturday night, all the you know, all the questions get answered. So yeah, I think this is what I mean is I, d I don't think with the fighters that he's for, I don't think you can you can judge him and put him on that pedestal pedestal too high because of the fighters he's for. I mean, he looked he looked a million dollars against Prescott, but so did Kevin Mitchell as well. You know, um, Prescott is is very very famous due to one win really. Um, you know, and, and everything else is kind of like flatter to deceive. Um, but he's had a couple of other good wins as well, but nothing, nothing outstanding because he's never been put into that, into that um, spotlight yet. And like I said, this is his big opportunity. And, and as far as his team concerned, and as far as he'll be concerned, he'll be expecting to come and take advantage of it. But you can't really, you can't really um, judge him on the actual fights, the, the names that he's fought. It's more of what he does in his fights, and what he does in those fights is very, very good. I'm really impressed with him. Um, like I said, it's slick, it's smooth, it's got you know, it's got all all the all the tools. And when he switches southpaw, everything's smooth about it. There's no, you know, a lot of fighters you can see a dip as they some guys are dying over there or whatever. And he says, clear yourself out. Um, so uh, in he, you know, when he when he sw switches round to southpaw, everything's smooth and he doesn't his performance don't dip. So he's comfortable in either way. Um, so it's going to be an hard fight. It's going to be a very hard fight. And it's a fight that um, Ricky can't let him get um, a foothold in early doors. He can't, he can't let him come out and be slick early doors and, and start popping rounds in the bank because it's going to be 
hard to break. Um, it's, it, I get the feeling that he's one of these guys that when he is confident, um, he's he's very hard to take out of that confidence zone. Mm. Okay, um, going back to last week. Now, I don't suppose anyone who's watching the show or was at the show anticipated what how big the night would end up being. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was quite of it seemed a, a decent show in whole, and then. Curtis's win combined with uh, Tommy Cole's brilliant fight at the end of yeah. the night as well just turned yeah. out to be a... F- yeah, and don't forget the drama. Don't forget the drama of uh, Gavin McDonald against Lee Wood. Of course, yeah. That was so dramatic because it looked, you know, early doors, it looked like Lee Wood you know, Lee was, 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 yeah. was, was going was gonna to do it. But to be fair, I mean, you know, the one thing that I did, I mean, I, I said just to, to Dave Ulley and, and some in... in um, uh, Gavin's camp and I said to one or two other people beforehand I'd not seen enough of those two fighters to make a judgement call on who's going to win the fight but looking at who they fought and the type of fights that they had I kind of I did lean towards Gavin because Gavin had been in that position where he'd, he'd fought unbeaten kids he'd fought local derbies you know he'd, he'd been he'd, he'd had fights where he was under pressure a lot before and I thought that that would help him in, in, in this fight and you know, and he went and, and he won and it was, a, it was a great night for South Yorkshire, it really was. Um, but obviously, you know, as far as I'm concerned, nothing nothing could top what Curtis did. What, right, let's just talk about, okay, so regardless of what happened, <laughs> who's that? You don't film anymore? Yeah. Hey. Bill and Nelson. You right, Bill? Aye. Are you ready for a left can, can, can you hang on a wee bit? We're going to be like five minutes. Look at this piece of fortune here. <laughs> hey, listen. You're a big fish up here. Listen, mate, I'm we're, not a we fish. have all time. Uh, by the way, here, but we're in an interview. I'm a nobody up here. Whatever you, you say has been left in. Yeah, so be careful what you say. Hmm? Oh, it's typical, he's eating, he's stuffing his face, comes straight in. Caramel chocolate bars. Um, yeah, Okay, regardless of what happened, uh, no doubt it was a close fight. Yeah. Um, now. But remember, before the fight, it was a joke, and it was he was going to get the beating of his life. Quote Spencer Fearon. Oh, is that, is that? I knew I heard it somewhere. Quote Spencer Fearon said it was a joke fight. Yeah. I, will, I heard him yeah. say that, so yeah. we'll give you that. Um, when it was announced as a split, which I kind of felt it was going to be announced as a split, uh, what did you think? Right, the funny thing is, that afternoon, um, I'd been, I, I was with Curtis, and um, I said to him, because before the fight, the night before, your mind's thinking, oh, please God, let him win this fight. And you, you're thinking every scenario. And um, I remember the feeling that we had when uh, George Groves against DeGale went to the d- decision. And that was like unreal. And I said to Curtis, I said, can you imagine, after everything we've been through, and it's a close fight, and my words were, and it's a close fight, and it goes to the judges, and we uh, split decision. That's how bad is that going to be? How, what are we going to feel like? What, how's it going to be? And we were having a little giggle about that, and I think, oh, fucking hell, it's going it's gonna to be a nightmare. And then when we went to decision, <laughs> and John McDonald said, split decision, we both just looked at each other and thought, oh God. And my mind went back to when um, when we did the Singleton fight and he didn't get the decision in that. And we kind of looked at each other and thought, I took a breath and I just thought, please God, please. And then when he said, I'm the new, wow. That was just that was just another level, that was just fantastic. Brilliant, I can't explain to you what those few seconds felt like. Um, it was just, you know, it's like you're talking seven, eight years of, uh, of proving or striving to prove the majority of people wrong. People that thought that, you know, it was just a gimmick and, you know, saying, oh, he's, he's, he's crap, he's this, he's that. And then even in the build to this fight, people slagging him off saying, oh, you got banged out by Derry, how are you, how are you getting a shot? Well, I got him a shot, you know, it doesn't matter, but people are judging him on his previous fights for this fight. But what I also did say to him is before him is that, every, and I mean this, from the Derry to, to, to Frankie Gavin to McDonough, Jim Morris, 
you know, all the other fights, all the losses, every single loss counted towards his win the other night because each of those losses, he could draw on him and he learned something from them, you know, um, and he, he, he could put it into it. I mean, the Derry fight was, was devastating for him, um, but it was his first big Sky Sports Live event where um, he was a main focus and you know he, he 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 was he said to me on the day he was so nervous he'd never been as nervous as that but he, he you know for this one he wasn't as nervous he was quite cool everything the build up was really really cool really really good um but you know he um he went out of there and did it and, and it's just absolutely fantastic it was just just the best story ever you know you look at what is achieved from football and then how, he, how how his football career went down and then you look at how he's come up boxing what i will say is Every single fight Curtis Woodhouse has ever had has been a real fight. Because right in the beginning, when he was fighting journeymen, who have lost loads and loads and won a couple, these guys are getting the ring, looking at <coughs> Curtis Woodhouse and thinking, you know what, I can nick a win here. Mm. And then the, you, you ask anybody, when a journeyman thinks he's got a chance for a win, to get the board off his back and just get a win and feel a bit special for one night, he gives it everything he's got. So every fight he, he's had has been a one where like, what's going on? Every fight what he's ever had is, um, is is a real fight. Whereas you get a lot of prospects where the guys come up, try and took up, try and survive, and get through it. And it's whether your prospect uh, stops them or, or or not. That's the main focus. But with Curtis, he's had to, he's had to fight every single one. And I think fights like that the whole way through have played a part. And again, the majority of fighters that are out there, champions, great prospects, they've had amateurs and they've lost in amateurs. Curtis's schooling and amateurs has been in the public eye as a professional. So we knew before the fight that Curtis said that it would be his last fight. Mm. It's been a week now. Mm. As I say, a week's a long time in boxing. Mm. As it stands today, nearly exactly a week since he won it, he's still 100% focused on retiring and vacating the belt. He's starting, he's starting to find, I think he's starting to find out it is going to be hard to walk away. He wants to walk away and he knows that he should walk away because it's the end of the story and everything. But um, he is finding it hard already. He is, you know, it, it, it's not about the money. It's about a challenge. It's about, um, he loves to fight um, and he loves the sport. He absolutely loves the sport. Um, we've had a lot of talks, and last night we was at, you know after ringside and after talk sport, we, we went out for dinner, and um, we've been you know we had a good talk. Uh, he he would like to walk away because he knows he should do, but there is an element of thought that's in his head at the moment where he's thinking, well, you know, I've just won a title. What you've got to remember is is when somebody wins a, t a title and performs the best that they've ever performed in the most highest profile fight they've ever had and have gone out there and done it, they then think, well, hang on a minute, I could be better next time. What could I achieve? Could I win something else? Can I keep holding my Lonsdale belt? So it is going to be really hard for him to walk away. I want him to walk away. I want him to retire. And I keep saying that to him. And then I see a little tweet that he sends out and I'm like ringing him up saying, no, don't do it. Um, so right now he is retired, um, but we've said don't say don't don't officially make a comment and don't officially hand in your title for a couple of weeks. Let let things settle down because right now he thinks he thinks he's King Kong. He thinks he's he thinks he's as good looking as David Beckham and, and as as strong as an ox. Do you know what I mean? So right now he thinks he's Superman. <laughs> Are you doing that again? <laughs> Five minutes I've been there. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, how long has he got to decide as in regards to whether he has to vacate the belt or not? Um, he's not got that long. Uh, which is why we're not... If it, it, nothing will happen until a letter goes to the board. If he retires and gives it up, it's got to be a letter that gets sent to the board. Until I do that, he can, he can say whatever he wants. You know? um, he can say he's retired or he can say he's carrying on boxing. But right now he's, he's a British champion. Right now he's not giving up his title because and, he, a uh, letter's not been sent to the board yet. Spencer Fearing's attempts to uh, rematch Listen, with Darren Hamilton. The amount of shit Spencer Fearing gives before that fight. Do 
really want to go through all that crap again. It was a hard fight, it was a good fight, but, you know, um, Curtis has beaten him now, and what I'm saying to you, it's not about the money, it's about... Yeah, that geezer made up. Shut up. Well, do you know what it is? It's just some geezers going like this in a van. Yeah, I know. That's it. But what do you think about punch stats for a fight? Do you think whoever lands the most, most punches should win? Because no. if, if you land 40 punches in that round, the next round you'll, you'll sort of win that round big. The yeah. next, next couple of rounds you don't, man. They, they don't. On the night, I thought Kurtz won by two. I texted you, didn't I? On Sunday, I went, on the night, I felt Kurtz won by two or three rounds. Yeah. And the next day, I was like, I think have Hamilton might have nicked it. Have you watched it without a contract? Yeah. That, that's when uh, I felt I felt it was very 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 close. Anyway, carry on. No, I'm sorry. Sure? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. sure? Yeah. Because I know you're for sure. Yeah. Things are tight on there. I'll get a taxi. You sure? Yeah. Go on. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you later. Quickie Bell. Billy Nelson. Quickie Bell. Pleasure. You're the man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That's what we were saying before. before do you know what? Uh, before Eddie. Let's just say one thing. I'm trying to do an interview here, right? All these weirdos that have come in. Hello. Billy Nelson, Eddie Hearn, yeah. Jim Carrey, and the coughing man. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I think I think we were saying about him retiring. Was it? Is that what no, we're saying? No, we're talking about the rematch. Oh yeah, Nelson. Spencer Fira. Yeah. Um, no, it, it's. I spoke to Curtis, and it's if he does carry on, it's about a challenge. Because he was never money motivated for boxing, uh, for the British title. It was about winning the British title because he, he promised his dad, because that was what he wanted. To, you know, he thought that was his ceiling, and that's what he wanted to do. Um, so really, it's got to be something that's, that's bigger than that. It's not necessarily, you know, uh, getting a couple of notches on Lonsdale belt because whether or not he's got the belt or not, he has. Nobody can take away now that he's, that he's become British champion, which is why he can walk away from it because he's won the British title. It, it, you know, obviously anyone would love to have the belt. To be, to be fair though, say worst case scenario, he has another fight and loses the belt in the first defence. You still don't take away that moment. I know, I, I know, and and that's what I'm. That's yeah, I understand what you're saying, but there will be an element of people that uh, that will say, "Ah, oh, well, you fucked up there. You should have you should have walked away when you said." And that's that's where his 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 worry is, and that's where my worry is for him. I do, I don't want what he's built for himself and his reputation and the respect that he's got I don't want him to ruin that I think for, forever more now he goes to boxing shows fans are going to love him forever more now he, wherever he goes you know people are always going to remember him as, as the geezer that was a professional footballer everyone thought were nuts and then went into boxing had this stupid dream that nobody thought he could, he could achieve and he ended up achieving you know and I think if he can, if he can wrap that up and finish there be brilliant but I understand that that's going to be really really hard for him to do which is why things that are above British title like a, a European or, or, or something that may be something that he you know I know he'd get his, get his teeth in you know like Tommy Coyle was, was uh, has, has been mentioned uh, a fight with Curtis that that is something that he would, he would get his teeth into but for the for the fight that it is he, he, he wants paying a lot of money for it and so whether you know because it's such a big fight and because the risk there of, of tarnishing reputation is, is massive. You know, I personally think he beats Tommy Coyle um, and Curtis thinks he beats Tommy Coyle, but it's, it's a big fight. And so if he was to carry on, I think maybe that, that's a fight that, that could definitely happen. Okay. Well, judging by your comments, it's very unclear what's going to happen. Yeah, it is because it, we're, all, we're, only a, we're only a week after the, his biggest night. And what you got to remember is he is still high. He's still riding a high. You know, he's still... Everybody's stopped. You know, he, he walked down... Oh, it's such an embarrassment. He walked down uh, London, uh, Regent Street, shopping. He just He's never been to London and stuff like that. He's never done that before. So he's walked down there in his scruffy tracksuit and his slippers thinking that th honestly thinking that nobody's going to know him and so a couple of people recognise him said oh you, you cut his what else so he's <laughs> he's done a U-turn gone back to the hotel put his shirt and his jacket on and then gone back out but he's still in that where, where people are recognising him people are knowing who he is and, and, and wherever he goes people want a piece of him so he's still on that high so he's thinking I don't want this to stop so should I fight 
but after you know when it all settles down a little bit then we'll we'll decide what he's going to do all right dave thanks for talking to uh, ifl tv thanks. and uh we look forward to tomorrow night yeah looking forward to it yeah. the atmosphere is going to be amazing i've got to say being in ricky's corner when they start singing flower scotland is unbelievable it's quite intimidating as an englishman in in in, in ricky's corner it's quite intimidating so Crawford might actually, you know, he might get a little bit intimidated as well. I'm not saying it's going to affect his performance, but he might get a little intimidated as well. All right. Good night. All right. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Nice to you soon. See you later. Thank you.